As the images of climate change crowd our world, they condense into a vision of apocalypse now. Possibly the greatest threat humanity is facing since the birth of the Earth. Is it the end of the world? Is there no redemption? Are these the last moments for the web of life on this planet of ours? This is the fear that dominates our psyche. But the people who have suffered the most ever since we pushed the climate to lose its balance are the poorer communities who felt a sudden faceless attack on their forests and farms, on their trees and plants, their coasts and oceans. But they did not forsake hope. They still harbor an abundant faith in them as they continue to celebrate their optimism and diversity. It is to understand this hope of the communities and their defiance of doom that the initiative of Community Charter on Climate Crisis began. The exercise took place in multiple locations and ecosystems. The coastal ecosystem was represented by Tamil Nadu's Gulf of Mannar, Orissa's Chilka Lake and Sundarbans in West Bengal. Pastoralists walked into the exercise from the deserts of Gujarat. Tribals from forest ecosystems were drawn into the charter debate from the forests of Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand and Madhya Pradesh. Issues of the mountains were articulated by communities from Nagaland, Orissa and the Western Ghats. Dalit farmers from the Deccan Plateau led the charter from Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. When the community started speaking their stories, a whole new worldview of what constitutes ecology started unfolding. Plants, apparently unattractive for untrained eyes and insensitive minds, were crucial for the existence of tribal communities. Especially those plants and animals that do not appear meaningful to the elite advocates of wildlife conservation. The water sources, which used to be plentiful and generous, had slowly started drying out. Not on their own, but as victims of greed the greed of the predatory outside forces. Their critical resources were being forcibly occupied by faceless markets which had money and power. But still, forests, hills and mountains remain the home of the tribes. It is what supplies them their food and livelihoods because of their profound knowledge of bonding with nature and living in total harmony with it. It is with this nature that their joys and celebrations are intricately woven. Their songs and folklores, their rituals and festivals, celebrations and commemorations spring from this source. In Nyamagiri Hills, which is being pushed to the precipice of an ecological disaster by huge mining lobbies and where communities are facing the prospect of becoming people nowhere to go, have this to say. 
We are called Dongaria because of the hilly forest Dongar that we cultivate. We love nature and Mother Earth. She has never let us down. She has always provided us enough for our daily needs. Even after we take what we need, the forests still survive and the streams continue to flow. Our forefathers have taught us to revere the earth, hills and forests. In Chhattisgarh, the Baigas have a moving story to tell about their forests, farming and the way they've been robbed of their dignified existence. Long back our forefathers lived in Maikal Hills. When they practiced bevar and grew about 12 crops, 16 vegetables, 21 leafy plants and 7 varieties of grasses for their consumption. When rivers and rivulets were full of clean and sweet water. When jungles were full of wildlife and many birds. Gradually they lost most of crops and varieties because of lack of agricultural land and change practices of agriculture. They also felt deprived of most of forest produce, flowers, fruits, tubers and mushrooms, which was earlier available in abundance around their native land and villages. They were forcefully restricted to enter freely in forest when they found loss of rich wildlife heritage from their jungles. The fast rate of deforestation caused crisis of food and their self-sufficient life went miserable. In order to hear their stories and document them in a systematic fashion, several participatory tools were employed. These included Problem Tree, which enables people to collectively analyze their climate-related problems and sort them into root causes and their manifestations. The problem tree formed the basis for a series of exercises that followed. Resource mapping was the tool which communities used to plot their forests. Farms, pastoral and fishing resources. While the tree helped the communities to identify the problems they were facing, mapping gave them a chance to collectively look at the resources still available to them and the opportunities offered by these resources to combat the climate crisis. This opened up a huge window into the wealth of knowledge and hope the communities had still preserved within them in spite of years of neglect and undermining by the mainstream policy frameworks. Bilala from Madhya Pradesh said that their Joom, a system of shifting cultivation and Patapani, system of water management, had not only kept their soils rich, productive and with high water retention capacity, but also gave them plentiful and diverse food and health nutritious sources. Nagas from the Chizami in the Fek district of Nagaland echoed this saying, there are several varieties of crop, vegetables and greens which we have been cultivating and most of these withstand climatic challenges. Apart from these, our forests and the local animals adapt well to any changes, especially the crops like millet, traditional paddy, yam, sweet potato, banana and others grow well in dry and rot-like conditions. For instance, a traditional variety of paddy such as kosaru, in fact, in our June fields gives more harvest than the wet paddy during the dry seasons. Dalit women from the Deccan were in complete agreement. They said, For thousands of years, we have been growing a basket of more than 80 different crops on our poor soils. 
each of these crops carries a range of nutrition with them. Eating these crops, our elders not only stayed healthy, but also did very hard work. This food system of ours protected us in times of famine, kept us cool in scorching heat, and in biting cold, kept our bodies warm. From one of the most ecologically vulnerable regions, Sundarbans, the message came loud and clear. We are living with natural disaster for long. Our ancestral knowledge to live in harmony with all in the earth, of which we are a part and she is a part of us, is our culture. The problems of cyclones, waterlogging and salinization are known to us from ages. We have the knowledge to predict and adopt to any adverse impact of it. The voices of the communities were getting clearer, categorical and cumulative. Though they came from unrelated corners of India, from ecosystems that had very little similarity to each other, spoken in languages that had completely different lineages, they were amazingly saying the same thing. Don't mess with our nature and our knowledge. We have the capacity to correct and combat the climate change. We can heal nature. Please allow us to do so. Please do not come in our way. This was a very powerful and resounding statement. When the third of the four exercises, namely timeline, was carried out, the reason why the communities were saying what they were saying became amply clear. The last 50 years have seen the systematic elimination of the pride self-reliance and the extraordinary knowledge with which the Indian local communities had used their natural resources. A predatory market economy had taken over their forests invaded their farms impeded their pastoral roots and had destroyed their eco-friendly fishing practices. This tragic history of the past few decades was a painful recollection of a paradise lost. But the communities, given a chance, were ready to rise above this trail of deprivation like a phoenix. This was evident in a series of problem-solving mattresses drawn by the Nagas, Baigas, Dongri Kondias, Maldharis, Paravas, Muttyars, Dalits and Fishers, and which mirrored the hopes and strengths they still had in great measure. The huge biodiversity some of them practiced in agriculture has the potential to cope with the low rainfall droughts and malnutrition that the climate change threatens to bring along with it.
Nagas, Baigas, Bheels and Bhilalas, Dongriya Kondis, with their awesome traditional water management knowledge, have the capacity to deal with shortages of water. The forest still offers a huge carbon capture capacity if only the control is legitimately returned to the forest communities. Maldhari pastoralists know how to graze their herds without creating any pressure on the ecology, if only their arguments are heard, understood, and their ways of working with nature are acknowledged. Dalits of the Deccan nurture a huge agrobiodiversity that can provide carbon sequestration through their cropping systems. Their non-irrigated dry land farming systems makes no demand on water unlike the Green Revolution agriculture. They use no chemicals on their soils. This is a positive farming system and the millets they cultivate are completely climate change compatible. The Community Charter on Climate Change reflects these problems and their analysis. The hopes and dignities. The confidence and courage that the communities carry with them. This is an extraordinarily inspirational charter that sums up their cosmo visions, their world views, their strengths, hopes and their demands on the Indian polity. Here are some excerpts from the charter. We, the people of India, from the mountains, coasts, forests, deserts, plains and plateaus of this vast and rich country, who have lived with nature for millennia, whose farming, fishing, forestry and pastoralism have been seen as iconic by the world, have today decided to articulate our issues, concerns and solutions to the climate crisis. We have come together from east and west, north and south, center and the northeast, to understand and deliberate on the challenges of climate crisis and have used participatory methods to revisit our relationship with farming, forests, fishing, pastoralism and other aspects of our living. At the end of these exercises, we are of the firm view that our bonding with nature, our respect for it, and the way we have learned from our forefathers to live in harmony with it show us many ways of dealing with the projected problems of climate change such as higher temperature, scanty and erratic rainfall, ill health and malnutrition. Through these deliberations we have rediscovered our strengths and are asserting that the world needs to recognize these as the foundation of our capacity to combat climate crisis. It is our profound belief that the rich ancestral knowledge we have been bequeathed can guide us to combat the current climate crisis. This millennial old community knowledge has enabled us to nurture living species and natural resources.